The new Boeing 747-8 is a massive machine, designed to take off at close to one million pounds. Through months of flight testing, the airplane has shown plenty of power on takeoff. But how would it handle all that energy if it had to suddenly stop? In the emergency event that we have to make a rejected takeoff at these heavy weights, it takes a long distance for the airplane to stop. It's just like in your car. Captain Kurt Vining and the Boeing test and evaluation team are about to put the airplane through the ultimate rejected takeoff, or RTO. First, the crew installs a set of 100% worn-out brakes. So it's down to the stud. So if you ever have your own brakes, they've got a machine down, so there's just basically no material left. Technicians also fuel the airplane up to maximum takeoff weight of just over 975,000 pounds. At the start of the runway, Captain Vining begins the takeoff roll as usual, pushing all four engines to maximum thrust. But just as the airplane is going at over 200 miles or 320 kilometers per hour, he slams on the brakes. To channel maximum energy to the carbon brakes, the pilot cannot use the thrust reversers. The whole intent is to demonstrate you, under worst conditions, you can safely stop the aircraft. The brakes, made by Goodrich, do exactly as they're supposed to. In fact, the 747-8 stops earlier than the team had hoped, beating the target by more than 700 feet or 200 meters. But stopping is just half the challenge. Now the airplane must prove it can withstand the tremendous heat that built up in the wheels, estimated to be more than 1400 degrees Celsius. And it's a simple physics problem. We have to turn that kinetic energy into heat in the brakes. As expected, smoke pours out from the brakes as they glow a bright orange. Still, the firefighters who are standing by can't do anything but watch for the next five minutes. And that's to simulate that if you were at an airport, you had an RTO, you wouldn't necessarily have the fire department right there. So to demonstrate that it, worst case would be five minute response time for a fire department to get to the airplane. By design, special fuse plugs in the tires are activated, deflating the tires before they explode. Finally, at the five minute mark, firefighters move in with plenty of water. While the tires and brakes will have to be replaced, the rest of the airplane is perfectly fine. No sweat, even for the flight test engineers who were on board. It went amazing. The detail rate was exactly what we expected. Brake stopping, no major faults. Slamming on the brakes so the new 747-8 can continue moving towards certification and delivery. From dragging the airplane's tail on the runway to flying head-on into fierce crosswinds, Boeing pilots have been pushing the 787 Dreamliner and moving ever closer to certifying the all-new airplane. When we do these big tests, it's a big deal because it is the test. After spending weeks on the road, flight testing in multiple locations, 787 Chief Test Pilot Mike Carricker returned to the office for a brief break and described some of the tests he and the team have been conducting, such as takeoff performance. You start with regular takeoff, like we recommend the airlines crews do all the time. And then what we do is we go around and we look at how much you can vary from it. You rotate before the predicted airspeed, you rotate after the airspeed, you uh, rotate too fast, uh, you rotate too slow, and it's all to, to uh, define that there's a, a tolerance for error. There was little margin for error when Captain Carricker maneuvered ZA-001, the first streamliner, for a takeoff test called Velocity Minimum Unstick, or VMU. This test establishes the lowest speed the airplane can leave the ground and requires putting the tail on the runway carefully. You don't want to hold the tail on the ground because that's actually a big break and it'll slow the airplane down and you'll never get up to the takeoff speed. But then again, you can't let the tail come up because then you're missing your data. And so the idea is to get the tail down quickly, smoothly, and just hold it on the ground. Just, just hold it on the ground and then hold that attitude and then you have to fly away. Next up, landing the Dreamliner on very wet pavement. Crews dump more than 50,000 gallons of water on an ungrooved runway. Then Captain Carricker had to pull off two landings. We do one with the manual brakes, and then we do another one using the airplane's automatic braking system. We demonstrate that the, the tires spin up and that the anti skip system works per design. And we use a normal technique uh, for the pilots so they don't have to do anything different. Wet is one thing, windy is another. ZA-002, the second Dreamliner, fought winds of 30 knots to prove the airplane 
is designed to handle high crosswinds. One of the kind of conditions that requires more piloting skills. Dan Mooney, vice president of 787-8 Development, explains how the pilots position the plane for landing. The pilots actually crab the airplane to angle the nose of the airplane into the, into the wind. At a certain point, um, the pilots will begin to turn the airplane back down to line up with the runway just in time for touchdown. We're really doing well in the airplane uh, part, and it's very exciting to see all these individual parts starting to be added up. And soon, Captain Carriker and the team will be back up in the air to test some more.